puck. Stop! Ah, I don't, I don't like it. That's so cool. But also, that's so horrifying. Water birth has become increasingly popular over the past couple of decades. And that's why today we are reacting to some water births with a twist. I'm Mom and Dr. Jones, a board certified OBGYN and mom to four. And today we're going through some animals who have their babies in water. Last time I did an OBGYN reacts to animal births, you all absolutely loved it and I also loved it, but was a little bit horrified. I wish I wouldn't have watched that, you know? So today we're doing it again. The first one is a mouth brooding fish. Believe it or not, there are certain tropical fish that carry fertilized eggs inside of their mouths. They continue to hold these unborn babies well after they hatch. This can be found being done in both the paternal and maternal members of the species. Once the babies hatch, they will then start feeding on the remnants of the yolks for up to a month. Up to a month? They stay in the mouth after they hatch for a month? It is wild enough that the eggs stay in the mouth. That's, I'm glad I don't have to do that. But also the babies, how do the fish eat if they have a mouth full of tiny fish? <laughs> what? What if they accidentally eat the babies? The young hatchlings are fed this way in order to help develop far more durable, more efficient, and heavier offspring that are more likely to hit maturity. This way- They just, did he just, they came out and then they all just went back in. I don't, <laughs> that fish has more control over its thousand babies than I have over my four kids. This way, the batch of babies becomes more equipped for the world ahead of them. That was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I had absolutely no idea that that happened. Like, I have never heard uh, that this is a thing. And I'm sure a lot of you are like, of course, everybody knows about mouth burning fishes, but I did not. So that was, that was really interesting to me. The next one is a Suriname toad. Unlike other toads, the Suriname toad has an unusual way of reproducing. I am just doing some final edits and my editor had, who, Welcome to the team. We're so happy that you're here. Added in trypophobia warning, which I didn't even know what that is, but apparently it's a fear of a lot of closely spaced holes and that is very applicable. Males call to the females by making a clicking sound underwater. A willing female releases 60 to 100 eggs and the male fertilizes them and pushes the eggs onto her back where they stick to her skin. During the next few days, her skin grows up and around the eggs, forming a honeycomb structure of pockets and eventually encloses them completely. After hatching- Stop it right now. That was cool and cute until it said the skin grows around them. I'm sorry, what? That is horrifying. Uh, oh, that gives me the ick. I don't like it. I don't like it. The young ride on her back for three to four months, continuing to develop under her skin. When ready, the fully formed toadlets push and squirm to loosen the female's skin. The puck Stop! Ah, I don't, I don't like it. Gets on her back, open to reveal the snouts and waving feet of the toadlets. When they're ready, they pop out of their holes and head for the water surface to breathe and begin life on their own. The little toads can start snapping at food right away, and they do not care if that food happens to be a sibling. The mother then sheds her skin, ready for the next breeding season. I am speechless. They just said they might eat each other, and then she sheds her skin, so she's ready to do it again, which is highly efficient, ma'am, but oh my gosh, that was like something out of an alien movie. I, I do not, I can't, mm -mm. Wow. We're gonna move right along to the sand tiger shark. The sand tiger shark has evolved a far more extreme response to a dwindling food supply, embryonic cannibalism. When its own yolk sac runs dry, a sand tiger embryo, no longer than a human finger, will rely on hunting instinct and a set of tiny primitive teeth. The how is that real? Also, how did they get these videos? This is wild, but it's little teeth. I don't know if that was cute or horrifying. These are no milk teeth. They are for killing. <gasps> Sand 
sand tigers produce one or two embryos every day. After the eldest grows its teeth, it begins to hunt down its brothers and sisters. What? Although blind, the shark can sense his younger siblings. Before they can pose a threat, it's time for a series of preemptive strikes. This is scary. So first off, it's really cool that they had embryos that are growing at different gestational ages. Like that's really scientifically interesting to me. And I, I didn't know that that's how sharks reproduce. I don't know if that's all the way across the board, but also how are they getting these videos inside of the womb of a shark? I just, that's so cool. But also that's so horrifying. It's attacking. I just, that's wild. The once crowded womb has become home no. to just a single living embryo. It's so sad. <sighs> now there's food aplenty. It can gorge at will on their yolks and their remains. It's so weird. I'm really glad that human embryos don't eat each other in the uterus. From this point on, the mother will produce no further embryos. Instead, all her resources go to her surviving offspring. This is footage from an actual sand tiger womb. How? The mother continues to produce unfertilized eggs for her maturing embryo to eat. It continues to grow in this eggy soup, swallowing up the yolks along with the bodies of its less fortunate siblings. I'm sorry, but that looks fake. It's just so crazy that they can take that. Now I feel like I need to go research the structure of where a shark keeps its babies because this is really wild. I, I had no idea it was like this. It's like a tiny house that they just hang out in. Like here's your temporary ocean inside and I'll provide you with some food and eggs and siblings to eat until you're ready to come out. It's so crazy. Cause like in human gestation, you don't do any of that on the inside, right? Like you don't eat, you don't get your nutrients from eating anything. It comes through the umbilical cord. So it's crazy to me that this animal is just like doing its normal function that it will do when it comes out, but on the inside, it's just wild. I don't know, it's so cool. I, I don't know how that's real. I That's, that's so crazy. I guess that's unique to a sand tiger shark. I'm not sure. They made it sound like it was specific to that type of shark, but do all sharks reproduce like that? Do all sharks eat their siblings inside? I don't know. All right, the next one is an eagle ray. And I've actually seen this one because I found it on Facebook instead of someone getting it together for me. And I said, we must include this in the water birth video. It's so good. Uh, I call the eagle ray a stingray in the entirety of this clip. I do in fact know they are different animals. I still do it, so. I had no idea stingrays gave birth like this. Like I probably would have guessed that they hatched from an egg because I'm apparently an idiot. First off, if you've never seen How to Train Your Dragon, you won't get this, but that looks exactly like the dragon on How to Train Your Dragon. And also, it is quite large for a newborn. I didn't expect it to be that big. <laughs> the way he has to unroll his wings because they've been like this reminds me of babies when they're born breech. So babies who've been breech for a long time, often when they come out, their legs will still like want to sit right up in front of their face. So they look like little like legs over their head. It's so cute. <laughs> Oh, he's such a good swimmer already. <laughs> I think he's upside down. Turn over. It's like, my wings don't work right. <laughs> oh, he's cute. He's not as big as I thought. I thought he was bigger, but he's not as big as I thought. Oh, another one. He's upside down too. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> they have to learn how to stay the right way. I'd never even considered that. That's so cute. Oh. 
that was really cool. I think that stingrays are really interesting animals and I love how they can stay the right way. So the next one is a hippo birth, which I didn't know that hippos gave birth in the water until right the second, but they apparently do. I cannot help but realize how incredibly similar that looks to how I felt when I was in labor. Like, I really empathize with this hippo right now. Relatively uneventful, baby came out pretty quickly, but now it's underwater and I'm assuming they need to get it out. snuggling oh my gosh this is the sweetest animal birth i've ever seen i love hippo birds <sighs> they're just snuggling oh it's nursing underwater what that is so crazy how long can they hold their breath i don't know enough about hippos this is so cool I loved that one. <laughs> okay, so the next one is a hammerhead shark birth. And to be fair, it's not actually a water birth, but it should have been. And then humans intervened with the process, it seems. So let's watch this one. It's the piling, buddy. It's heads right on the piling on my side. So go on the back side of the piling. You'll, on the other side. No, other side. Oh, 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 oh. So it appears that this shark probably came into more shallow water to give birth and now they have pulled it out, maybe thinking that it was in danger. I'm not sure. And then they're just pulling them out and taking the babies away. I don't like this one. What are you doing with the babies? They probably need to stay. I don't know what the normal postnatal process of a hammerhead shark is, but I, I don't know that you should be just, this is, I don't like it. I don't like this one. Well, that was an interesting experience, but I don't think we learned a whole lot about hammerhead birth. And it also just made me a little sad and a little angry. So maybe they actually thought that the shark was in danger. I don't have enough of the backstory of what happened, but uh, humans. And for the last animal birth, we are going to do my favorite animal, which is a dolphin. And I have admittedly seen dolphin births before because I love birth and I love dolphins. So we're going to enjoy this one together. Boys oh, coming out tail first. Do they always come out tail first? I don't know the answer to that. If you know the answer to that, leave it in the comments down below. This is actually quite a bit longer process than I thought. I mean, not that it should be short. I just mean like the tail's out and it's taking a long time to go from tail to rest of the baby. Oh, that's a really big dolphin. It never ceases to amaze me how big a baby looks when it comes out as compared to when it was on the inside humans too and also i'm really impressed by the swimming obviously not a perfect swimmer yet but doing remarkably well i mean that is pretty impressive oh his little dorsal fin oh my gosh it's so cute <gasps> and mom's pushing him up to get air oh i love it it's so cute dolphins are the coolest animals i didn't know their dorsal fins were like that when they were born i mean it makes a lot of sense because it can't come out straight up that would be sounds like it probably would be very difficult but i just i guess i never even thought about it so that's really cool i love dolphins 
Thanks for being here today, y'all. If you like this video, please leave a like on it. If you want to watch another animal reaction video, I will link it right over here or over there. I never know which way to point. I'll link it right here for you. If you're new and you'd like to subscribe, we'd love to have you. Hit that button, turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. I will see you next Monday.